Welcome, my name is Konstantin Magnus and this Cinema 4D tutorial will be about modeling with sub-polygon displacement shaders and about modeling with displacement deformers. So sub-polygon modeling works basically like this. You can start off from a very primitive shape which is based up on quads or at least rectangular shapes that are close to quads and these can be either subdivided with a shader that is dividing those quads up into more and more little quads which is going to be used to deform the surface during render time. So that way you will see a structure like this in your viewport but when you render you get this as a result. You can also use the displacement deformer to get a very similar result which will be visible in viewport but is a little harder to handle because it creates much more geometry. You can see here it's full black because the lines uh, from the, resulting from the polygons are so dense. So basically when can you use subpolygon displacements? I would use it in all those cases where you are basically um, not really in a mood to sculpt stuff because if you look at an example like so, when you have a beach, you don't really want to go and model this by hand. You don't want to use sculpting for each little hill or so. You would just set up a noise shader that resembles that structure. And that's the same what I did here in my rather artistic example, which is supposed to resemble well, just some man-made thing maybe from an Indian culture or so uh, which has some concrete shapes and some more random shapes and also has some pores and some scratches and this is built up out of noise as well so let's dive into the file the first object is just a cylinder with regular segments. Um, they are supposed to be looking like quads. This object has no shader applied and no deformer so that way it will render out pretty much the way it is right now. The second object looks the same but will be rendered out far more complex as it is using a material which has a displacement channel to it. The displacement channel contains noise which is going to displace the surfaces, the surface at render time. So that way it get, gets more complex but you can handle it easily in your viewport. The third object can be seen in almost render quality because it is having all the details applied already. That is because it uses a displacement deformer which gives us a live preview of the result. So by rendering you can tell that the shader is far quicker than the displacer deformer. Let's set this up ourselves. Whatever geometry you use as a base, it should be regularly subdivided. Go to display grow shading lines for that and see that you have a regular structure in there. In case of a cube, it should like this. If you are using a cylinder, you should see that you have first a structure which is regularly subdivided as well. So you give it height segments and some cap subdivision. There is a slight problem however. 
if we first look at our cube, I make it a little smaller, 20 by 20, and move it aside, then you can see that the cube will be subdivided perfectly, so it looks round in the end. Let's drag, just for testing purposes, the cylinder in the subdivision surface modifier and you can tell that it's not really working on the edge, it's still staying sharp. So this is because the cylinder cap is not connected with the sides. It's no smoothing, no rounding is uh, happening here. So in order to connect the cap with the rest, you just set the fillet to at least one segment and use a radius of maybe two in my case. Just make sure you don't have too many segments and a tiny radius here. You want to keep the size of the neighbors. So one segment and maybe two centimeters is a good compromise to get around the corner. Now if you subdivide this you see it has a very smooth result. Drag it out again. That was just a test for later on because this is pretty much the way a sub-polygon displacement works. So let's create a new material, call it Displace. Apply it to the object go to basic and disable reflectance and activate displacement. Within the displacement channel you can first set a texture, I'm gonna use noise with its black and white spots to displace the points along their normals. So when I render now you will see that the object gets deformed. I can use the height value to define how strong this displacement should take place in some cases. One centimeter will be enough to make it look not too perfect. You can also change or even animate the strength parameter. So you can go from 0 to 100 percent to get the full effect. Let's set the height to 5 centimeters just for testing. And the most important, important part is the texture, of course. Because in here you could define far more complex structures than just that simple noise pattern. We will dive inside right away, but let's first use the sub-polygon displacement, because this is giving you the opportunity to subdivide the geometry even further before displacing it. That way you get really smooth curves or smooth dis displacements. Just make sure you even round the geometry so that way it will look perfect. Now the subdivision level defines whether you just want rather rough subdivisions or rather high polygonal resolution. Keep in mind that the subdivisions are based on to the existing topology. So the level of 1 would mean cutting through this polygon here and there, so you have one, 4 polygons out of 1. If you have a subdivision level of 2, then you will get more cuts through that polygon, so you have 16 polygons out of 1. So with this rough structure, we should rather use a proper subdivision level ranging from 4 to maybe 6, depending on our structure. Next, let's dive inside the noise to see what stuff we can change. One more thing before we start, you can also change the type. Intensity means it can go in and out but this may lead to problems in dense regions 
I don't want to give it that kind of freedom. I just set it to intensity so it always goes out. So you can kind of say the cylinder has this radius, 14, and everything I do now with my shader is adding to that radius. So 14 is the minimum and now we add 5 centimeters to it using the white spots on, on our noise. Let's dive inside the noise by clicking on it. And now we get loads of options and some of them are really useful. First of all, to get a faster preview, I activate the interactive render region, drag it over my object and use that little arrow here to 100% so I have a 100 or a perfect quality preview. Now let's just see what our options are. First of all, we can swap valleys and hills by dragging the colors over. So this is the opposite of what we just had. I can drag it back. Next, I can define some clipping down here. And there are mainly three ways or maybe more of uh, clipping that. The first is reducing the low clip, like the lower color, which is giving me really um, flat valleys. The opposite is clipping the top, which gives me plateaus. I can also clip both colors, that way I get plateaus and flat valleys. And now an option you don't think of right away is what if you want to have only a few white or black spots and you just use one clipping very strongly and that way you get those kind of dents. Or if you want it to have dents then just swap the colors. Then you get this cheese-like optic. You can also use that kind of clipping which makes stuff stick out. I think we had that in a similar fashion just before. Depends on what colors you choose. This option by itself is quite powerful. But it gets even more exciting when you consider all those different noise types. You can get either a name list or maybe easier preview pictures of our noise types. So what would be an application for this? One thing I find really useful is for example the FBM noise which can be like many other noise types run through many octaves ranging from very primitive to more iterations which get more complex results. Five is not the maximum but in many cases five brings you enough detail. And you can also use clipping here. And what I like about this clipping is that I can sort of simulate corrosion. Like if I have corroded metal, I of course don't need that much height. I can get away with maybe one or two centimeters and use clipping a lot depending on where I bring the colors closer together. I get different amounts of corrosion. The next thing I can change is the global scale, so I can make this pattern really small or I can use a rather big scale of 200 units. That way I can change my metal pipe to a structure like this. Keep in mind that this is just a quick demonstration, so with fine-tuning you can get 
incredibly good looking results. However, if you need more detail, because this may look too soft for you, then you can go back to the subdivision level of our material and increase it. That way, everything gets sharper. Up to 6, which really is intense for the CPU. There's loads of um, polygons and points to um, calculate on, but um, you can see in some cases it's worth it. Now you can also um, deform the noise, so give it a more tree-like structure. And once you're satisfied with that first um, kind of um, design, then you can put different noise patterns on top. Just go to layer and that way your noise will not be deleted, but it's still in that layer and you can use new layers on top. For example, if I wanted to have tiny little um, dents in there, or pores in this case, then I could first look at them in pure, like without any other layers going on, and then in the end I multiply it, and now I have a combination of those little points and those long streaks. And if I want to make something softer, I can just reduce the layer amount, or the other way would be to reduce the color to something like gray, or if I don't want the cuts too deep, then I can lighten them up. That's two ways of weighting my effects. Next, I would like to give you some advice on um, how to work with those kind of maps. Because if you have many layers going on, it will be more and more confusing and you may have a hard time to see what is what while you're changing parameters. So that way, um, or a nice way is to just copy those um, displacements maps over to your color channel or to your luminance channel and disable the displacement for the time being. So that way, if you go to editor and set it to 1000, you get a quite clear preview without even needing to render. And so that you, way you can just have a really quick preview of what is going on here. For example, if I change some kind of clipping, then I can see those pores disappear and it may be, excuse me, maybe easier for me to, to just um, preview what I'm doing. If you have more complex stuff in mind, like areas of influence or using alpha masks within that scenario, then um, I can show that as well. Let's say you have a broad structure which is defining two kind of phenomena on your surface. Then you can use clipping to divide that in, for example, two surfaces. And this mask, or this can be used as a mask, so you just use a so-called fusion, which is not really a layer system, but it can be combined with a latest uh, system with a layer system later on. But it works more like an alpha channel in Photoshop. You just use a mask, drag and drop that mask over to the mask channel, delete it from the base channel, and that way, just for preview purposes, we can use colors. What you put in the base channel. Um, is seen only when the mask is set to white and what's black in your mask will be shown in the blend channel. So I just take a color 
to make it clear what's what. And now I can start with, for example, two structures. I can say I want noise in that one channel and I want a more detailed noise in the other channel, maybe like so. This may look ugly at first, but if you analyze the structures closely, you will often see that structure changes over place. So now we have the freedom to imitate stuff we know from nature or from metal or whatever. And once we're happy with what we did, we can drag this over again to the displacement channel. And just drag it here. And now I disable the color, not by disabling the whole channel, but just by reducing the mix strength down to 0%. That way the gray color comes through. And now when I render this, I get the very same effects are applied to my structure. Now next let's um, use the noise of our shader and apply it to a deformation object. So with my copied object I don't need a material right now. Drag it over and we can use or should use a displacer deformation object and put it underneath our copied cylinder. Now you see here we have the same options, we can define the height of our displacement and we can also set the type to intensity so it just goes away from the surface and not inside it. Next we have the shading tab and here it's awaiting a shader and we can just copy the information from our shader texture by copying the channel, going back to displacer object and pasting it here. So that way the shape on the right hand side, this guy, resembles this one when it's rendered. Let's see. Rough approximation. Only thing that doesn't work so far is the height, which was set to one centimeter only in our shader and so it should be the same here. And of course you will see that we are lacking all the detail. So the solution for that is easy, just give it more segmentations here. I use 1000, which is a lot, but we need that. And if we go close we see the polygons are stretched, so give it 600 rotation segments. That way you immediately see that we get, get all the detail back. Only on top we are lacking some details, so let's define the caps with 100 segments and use, I don't know, maybe 40 in here. So this looks almost like an even structure. Now if we zoom out using the S key, then we get the same result. Of course, this new object with the displacer doesn't render as quick, um, but the good thing is we get immediate feedback right in the viewport. So for example, if I was to change something like the noise, then we get the, that feedback. Same with the masks. We would see that within a second. And the good thing is I can even do st stuff on top of that object because it doesn't have a material yet. I can for example do two interesting things. Let me show you that with my object I had before. Let's say this is the stem. We, we had that in the intro. Um, it basically was looking like this. 
takes a while longer to calculate because there's a lot of stuff going on. And now the cool thing is I can use the pores and those little carvings in there um, in my shader. For example, if we have a look at the dirt shader, there's a layer in there which is using fall off and ambient occlusion to really make those uh, carvings stick out. I simulate that with a new material, we can call it dirt if you like, and just apply it to your deformed object. And we can now use those two effects, namely the ambient occlusion. I just turn the ambient occlusion red for a second so we can see it better and set it to maybe 5 centimeters. Just 20% accuracy and 20 maximum samples. And let's render this out. Now you can see the red ambient occlusion is within all those pores, which looks good. Now another phenomenon is that when it rains, there will be dirt on all those top surfaces. So let's do that as well using a layer so we can keep the ambient occlusion, but we will put a so-called fall off on top. The fall off shader should work like this. Everything that's coming from the top direction will be colored in yellow and the sides will be rendered in red and the bottom, like when we look from down, it will be black. So for what I need, I could simplify that and just say the tops should be black and the lower parts can remain white. Later on, I can combine those two guys using multiply and those two layers will then look like this in combination. You see some grayish dirt here and you see some reddishness inside. We will not keep it as red but we will turn it to black later on. This immediately makes your surface more realistic. And also think of the fact that you can use that layer as a mask the way we discussed it before. I already prepared this dirt material here, use some deformation to make it a bit more complex so we can see better the fall of shader working here. And let's look at it from close and render it. Of course you can do all sorts of things with that method, for example um, sand, which is only based on a combination of both really. It's a displacer object for the to get some hills in there, some slightly uh, different noise for secondary hills if you like and those tiny dips are created with a displacement deformer again. So that's this. You can see the structure is changing over place a bit. I sometimes have those little um, hills on top of them and some carvings and it, it really mixes the surface a little without even using colors really.
Until the next tip, I would like to show you some examples of what you can use the technique for. By the way, if you want to add local detail, then you can use spheres, for example, and mention them within a collider displacer. Here's collision, and I added those two spheres. And those spheres can be used to kind of deform the already deformed surfaces so the sand goes up where needed. Same game here. Uh, with the Iceland scenario, um, this is displacement 2 again, clipped of course, and I, the one thing you need to do is using the displacement as a mask for the colors in the color channel, so you can basically see here, I just used one layer of noise to get that displacement going, and then you drag it over to the color and use it within a fusion as a mask, and the base channel here is the soil uh, with grey noise colors and the snow is done with pure white. And the, again, as we mentioned it before, the mask channel is just dividing between the snow and the soil. I hope you got some inspiration from this tutorial and see you soon.